Hi, my name's Sam from WTM Sydney, and I want to talk a bit about the concept of alienation. Um, the reason I want to talk about that is I think it's a, a really fundamental concept um, to get your head around in order to really comprehend and access uh, the explanation and the solution to the human condition put forward by Jeremy Griffith. And um, in order to sort of talk a bit about that, I want to start by reading out a, a short quote um, from the famed Scottish psychiatrist Artie Lang uh, from one of his books, excuse me, The Politics of Experience. And um, this short quote is in the introduction to the book in the very first paragraph. And uh, it, it's as follows. There is little conjunction of truth and social reality, and the word reality is in quote marks. Around us are pseudo-events to which we adjust with a false consciousness, adapted to see these events as true and real and even as beautiful. Now, for me, uh, I think it's a really profound quote or passage, in particular the use of the word false consciousness uh, in terms of actually starting to understand uh, and get your head around what is meant by this term alienation that Jeremy Griffith used, the way he uses it, what he means by it, and what the far-reaching implications um, of, of that reality of us being alienated are. And um, before I sort of work into it, I mean, at a day-to-day -day level, myself, like most people, would like to think that um, you know, we're sound of mind, that I'm sound of mind, that I can think straight. And what I mean by that is that um, I've got a truthful perception of, um, or relatively so, of, of my condition in terms of how I think and feel about the world, uh, how I perceive myself, how I perceive the world around me, that in a sense I can process information uh, in a rational and an objective fashion, um, that in a sense um, my thinking is relatively free of you know, a bias or a prejudice uh, or a distortion, um, or if, if you like in that sense that I've, my, my field of view and my vision in terms of how I can think and feel is, is, is like this, is sort of is, is out here nice and wide, uh, and isn't in, impeded or impinged or narrowed down um, by any particular issue or what have you. But what if the reality is actually the complete opposite of, the, opposite of that? And, and that's, a, I think, a way in to actually understand what, what alienation is and what those far-reaching implications of our alienation are actually, what they actually are. And um, what I mean by that, what if, in fact, um, we've got this deeply embedded psychosis and neurosis that actually prevents us from seeing the reality of our human condition in terms of rather than actually being able to see ourselves and the world like this to sort of to, to illustrate it, what if in fact we've got an extremely narrow, um, distorted, prejudiced view um, as a result of this embedded psychosis and neurosis uh, having grown up with and as a product of the human condition? Now, to sort of tease that out a little bit, I just wanted to use a couple of examples. Um, the first one is, you know, Plato's uh, allegory of a cave and the concept of, of humans, humanity as a whole, being depicted as, uh, as or represented as, as prisoners, um, being held deep within a cave, that we're, we're chained to the, the floor of the, the cave and we're um, chained in a way where we're, we're facing the back wall of the cave. And what when we're looking up at the cave, what we see is, is shadows and illusions, but the important subtlety is from as far as we're concerned in terms of how we, we perceive those shadows and illusions, um, we take them to be real. We take them to be um, a depiction of reality, to be a reliable depiction of reality, a, a truthful representation of reality. And um, in that sense, we've got no awareness of the fact that we, for starters, are in a cave, that we're in chains, and we've got no awareness that what we're seeing and are taking to be real in fact, is, if you like, make-believe. It's, it's a projection. Um, it, it's divorced from uh, actually an enlightened or honest, truthful depiction of our, of our reality. Um, and so th that concept that we're, what we're seeing uh, and taking to be real, in fact, is, 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 a, is not real, um, takes, into my view, goes to the heart of what alienation is about. And the other sort of good example is the modern day movie, The Matrix, which sort of picks up some of the themes of Plato's um, allegory of the cave. And, um, you know, in a part of the movie, there's, there could be a depiction where, say, someone like myself, um, I'm walking down the street and um, I can feel the, the cool breeze on, my, uh, on my, my skin. I can feel the warmth of the sun. 
um, I can see a nice green tree or a, um, a, you know, a girl in a nice um, pretty, pretty red dress. And as far as I'm concerned, I'm taking what I'm seeing to be real and to be, a, uh, to be reality. I've got no awareness of perhaps that being a, a false perception of reality. But the movie then juxtaposes that um, depiction with what in, in fact is taken to be the reality of the human situation, of my reality, and that is this, you've got these towers of, of um, rows on rows of, of, of humans in these sort of mucus-filled pods or coffins, if you want to think of it like that, where um, we're actually asleep or in, in a, a coma and um, our mind is, in a sense, plugged into a into the matrix is plugged into a, a virtual reality such that, and, and what it's doing, it's depicting this, this concept that um, on the one hand, um, what we take to be reality is in fact a virtual reality. It's not um, an honest depiction of our condition, of our, of our situation. And, and again, like I said, that for me goes to the heart of this concept of alienation. Um, now at one level, if you really sort of slow down and contemplate that, this idea that um, where we're living is in a, we've got a false perception of reality um, or what we take to be real is not real or that on the one hand, we think we've got this, we're, we're sound of mind that we, uh, that we can think straight, that we, if you like, we think we've got this, a full unimpeded view of our situation to actually contemplate the idea that no, 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 it's actually the complete opposite, that we've actually got almost a, completely narrowed, non-existent view, and that, in fact, what we take to be real uh, and an honest depiction of our situation, honest awareness of our situation, is, is actually false. Um, for me, that when I really think about that, it's, 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 it's the equivalent of looking over a precipice. It, it almost, it almost puts, it induces a sort of a sense of, of vertigo or um, causes the blood to drain from your face. You know, it, it, it's a sense of, of nausea. Um, because it is extremely, this, this, the notion that, in a sense, we conceal the truth from ourselves, um, to use Lang's words, that we, we're living in a, a state of false consciousness, um, it's extremely unnerving, and um, we want to sort of recoil away from that. But I, there's a couple of things I wanted to say about that, is that, first of all, um, Yes, there's this. There's a, a fear of, of of starting to contemplate that, but of itself, in a way, I suggest that that fear is is validation of the fact of how real this alienation is. Um, that you know, it's sort of almost like this notion of of spying on yourself or looking. A, if you could look around the corner at yourself and see yourself in 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 reality, honestly, who you are. Yes, that's extremely daunting. Um, because obviously until now we haven't had explanation of the human condition. But my point is that that sense of fear that we actually um, are living with a false sense of consciousness, as real as that seems, it's also a validation of the reality of this, of what alienation is. Because at one level, um, alienation can feel like some sort of fantastic concept or what, what's depicted in uh, The Matrix or, or play, Plato's allegory. Well, look, it's just a nice story. Um, but what if alienation is a is actually a tangible um, phenomena? This this concept of a psychosis and a neurosis in terms of how we think rationally, uh, how we feel emotionally. What if in effect there is this brick wall, um, and we are divorced from the human condition? Uh, in that sense, it's the it's the most all pervading dominant thing in our in our life in terms of uh, dictating how we think and feel. But what if, in fact, we live in a, in a divorced state from that? Um, and that, for me, and we're unaware of the fact that we're divorced, and that, you know, and Jeremy talks about it, that's fundamental to uh, how alienation works, that it presupposes you've got an, an unawareness or an ability to reflect on that alienation. Otherwise, that completely, completely defeats the purpose of it. Um, and the second thing I wanted to say about that, um, that sense of fear, like, I, you know, I... I kid you not, it, it, it is that sense of, of looking over a precipice or a sense of vertigo um, to contemplate that what you are taking to be real um, is actually is, is not real, that you're living with a false consciousness. And, you know, Lang talked about, talks about it in that quote where, um, you know, um, 
to see things, to see events as true and real and even as beautiful. And if you, you actually step back and think about what we, me, um, take to be of value, to be of meaning, to be of sustenance, the things that we, we draw sustenance from, the things that we believe to be beautiful, um, you know, walk down the street, whatever it is, clothes, cars, materialism, um, whatever it is, if you were to actually step back from that or hold it up and, and look at it, um, you would, you would, in a sense, you would see that we are demonstrably unsound of mind or we're sick, as Lang would say. Um, and that is the reality of the human condition. And, and okay, yes, building an awareness of this, this, this false consciousness, this alienation, um, getting that on the table and addressing that, uh, yes, that is, that, is, that is fearful, it is confronting. But importantly, um, Jeremy Griffith has addressed the root cause of why we've needed that alienation, of what's produced that alienation in humans. Um, and, and through addressing that root cause, it's, if you like, ameliorating or, or ending the need for it. That alienation has been an outcome of having lived with um, the human condition. And Jeremy talks about the underlying guilt um, that's at the heart of the human condition in, in his most, most recent talk in particular, the great guilt, which I really recommend you have a look at. And now that that, 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 that core guilt has been, um, if you like, ameliorated or redeemed or explained, absolved, um, the resulting alienation that we've had to live with in order to cope with that guilt, uh, as I say, is now redundant, it's no longer needed. And we've got the overarching compassionate ex explanation of the human condition. So um, as compared before where we necessarily had to live in, if you like, Plato's cave of denial, because the truth about our condition was, was too condemning, too critical, too condemning, confronting, um, was you know, suicidally so, We've now got the ability to move out of the cave, uh, to live with the lights on, to live um, with a truthful, um, uh, what's the best way of saying it? With a, we can live with the, the true perception of our situation. Um, we can live with the truth of that. Um, and that's, that's an unbelievable paradigm shift. And that's what um, Jeremy Griffith's explanation and solution to the human condition brings about. But I think... Like to go back to the start, for me, this concept of alienation and, and actually getting a handle on what that means, the profound implications of that, for me, it's a really uh, important foothold or unlocking point um, to actually really comprehending what Jeremy Griffith is talking about. So, yeah, I just thought talking about that might be helpful and, and using that quote from, from, from Artie Lang. So, yeah, I hope you get something out of that. Thanks very much.